You're a smart person, you've read the title of the video and seen the words procedural detective simulator and have some ideas, some expectations of what that actually looks like. Let's start with this. Shadows of Doubt is easily one of the most ambitious games I've ever played. When sizing up Shadows of Doubt as a detective simulator, place less emphasis on the word detective and more on simulator. I've seen people describe it as a kind of 3D dwarf fortress. Fighting words perhaps, but it's definitely a good comparison to convey the level of detail that the simulation of Shadows of Doubt provides. This block of apartments right here, they all have people living in them, and these people have jobs at different places that they go to. They have medical records and blood types, they live in apartments with address books that have phone numbers that you can call, there are safes you can crack, computers you can break into, all backed by a labyrinthian system of ventilation shafts. It's a world that feels very grounded. Despite its voxely nature and robotic citizens, Shadows of Doubt still provides much in the way of diegesis. Employee records appear on printed paper, telephones have buttony number pads and make the expected anxiety-inducing dial tones. It feels great to flick between light switches, tap away at keyboards, and knock on doors. If you like looking at cool technical things in games and going, oh, that's cool, how have they done that? Then this is the perfect game for you. It's the perfect game for me at least, I don't think the novelty has worn off yet, over a dozen hours in. But I'm sure many of you are a little apprehensive about all of this. It's all very well making bold, ambitious claims such as a procedural detective in a procedural world where procedural victims are murdered by procedural killers, but what's the design like? How does it actually play out in practice? Well, not brilliantly for the most part? That's not to say that I think it's bad, it's to say it plays out exactly as you'd expect for a procedurally generated murder mystery. When it doesn't work, it really doesn't work. It's janky at the best of times, glitchy at the worst. If you can't find the evidence, if you can't connect the dots, then there's nothing there to help you. Vents can lead to rooms completely unrelated to the case at hand. The cases themselves are often incredibly boring. Oh, the upstairs neighbour did it, big whoop. You are simply not going to get the same kind of experience here as you do with heavily authored games such as Return of the Oberdin, Paradise Killer, and The Case of the Golden Idol. Shadows of Doubt's main draw is not the mysteries. It's in early access and I have no doubt that this is at the top of the list to be addressed, but there aren't even that many ways to solve cases. Fingerprints are pretty much the only avenue to the killer, maybe bootprints, maybe, maybe witnesses. The problem with citizens being cogs in the machine is that they become machines, not people to actually talk to or question about what they saw. If you chase any other thread, you're wasting your time. Motives, means, and opportunity are kind of out the window here in favour of rolling the big wheel and having Julie from HR suddenly transform into a serial killer. As it stands, the mystery machine of Shadows of Doubt does not do a great job at creating a wide range of compelling mysteries. So why do I like it so much? Because it's not really about the mysteries. The mysteries are the backdrop, the excuse the developers have given you to mess around with all of these systems. The main draw of Shadows of Doubt is the process. The act of investigation, the knocking on doors, the combing of every inch of an apartment, the tedious cross-referencing of address books. Because of its procedural nature, there's no clear path. Each investigation is organic. There's no objectives telling you to go to this place or talk to this person. You have to decide. You're the one that draws up the big detective board. A board where you can pin anything you want from a pistol to a bar of soap. This board means nothing to the big machine of Shadows of Doubt, but everything to you. You can even write your own notes, you'll need to for a lot of cases. It's a game that's surprisingly fun to get competent at. Its directionless nature means that it can be frustrating at first, it teaches you very little, though admittedly I did skip the tutorial and honestly I'd recommend doing that. A lot of the enjoyment comes from building an arsenal of procedures. Visiting the victim's workplace, systematically background checking everyone in the address book, using the same backdoor into the government database that you opened up three cases ago. And thus the main reason why Shadows of Doubt is so good is the same reason why other systemic games such as Metal Gear Solid V or Heat Signature are good. The emergence. The mixing of systems to create interesting scenarios for the player. Through that emergence, the unique stories the player gets to tell. A story perhaps about how I was tasked with stealing corporate documents from someone's home, the only lead on the owner being a first initial of M along with a few other sparse characteristics. So I went to my usual back door in City Hall and, yeah, went through every single person whose name starts with M until I found a match. But just as I was about to leave, a security guard swept in and I somehow made it out in the nick of time. 
I don't actually remember stealing the documents themselves because this moment was way cooler. So yeah, it's completely different to the authored games that you might be used to and that's no bad thing. There are clear weaknesses to this model. It's procedurally generated and feels procedurally generated, but it's very easy to overlook these trappings because the game still has a sense of authorship in the artistic sense. It's a game that's been designed with intentionality. It's not just been thrown together. The difference between the flirting of Shadows of Doubt and the harassment of Midjourney, if you will, the worlds of Shadows of Doubt, the algorithm that creates its worlds, has been intentionally crafted in such a way to evoke specific feelings. A sense of scale, a sense of freedom, a sense of being in a place that you don't quite belong. A world that isn't like our own. It plays to its strengths, it's not trying to be Oberdin, nor should it be. In fact, I want more games that do this, that challenge convention and create something that's truly its own thing. Call me optimistic, but I can't see any direction this game can go, but up. Hello there, thank you for watching. Um, as always, I hope you are doing well. I hope, I hope everything's good. Okay, so channel OGs, or um, you know, people who have gone back and watched my old video on heist games, uh, may remember that I guested on a podcast called Video Gems, uh, which is a podcast about video essays and the people who make them. Uh, well, guess what, right? Uh, I've been promoted. <laughs> there's, uh, there's a new season which I'm actually uh, co-hosting uh, with Darkfire and Arnok, and it's really cool. Uh, we're talking to a lot of cool people. Uh, we're willing to sort of kidnap anyone who we know who makes videos and, and get them to talk about stuff. Um, so if that's you, then watch your back, uh, and it'll be great. <laughs> I'll I'll, um, I'll link the first episode below. Okay, yeah, that's it. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, take care. Goodbye.